We are now being joined by Corey Anderson. Once again, we'll begin with a few questions from the media. Jake, your line is now live. Hi, Corey. How are you doing? Jake Jones from Ultimate MMA here. Um, congratulations on the birth of your daughter, Nina. Now, this was only a month or so back. Has this given you a new motivation to go and win that belt? And has fatherhood changed the way you're training at all? I mean, fatherhood changed my life uh, two years ago when my son was born. So that already gave me that new motivation. And that is what helped me on the, the winning streak I went on in the UFC. And then towards the end, I kind of lost focus of what I was fighting for. And we all saw what happened when I went into Yon. Like I didn't fight for my family. I didn't fight for myself. I went out there to prove a point and I paid the ultimate cost. And then uh, coming back into the man who fights, since that was my first fight after the February 15th, uh, the free focus is back, you know, spent so much time with my son during the quarantine, watching him grow, building that relationship. And uh, just remembering like, this is why I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything, every move I make is for my family so I can give them a better life. So I need to go out there and be smart about it. And now that I have two and having my baby, this baby girl, and not only having another baby, but delivering the baby myself, it just put a whole nother aspect on everything. And now it's really like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go out here. I gotta be smart. I gotta do everything so I can get home safely to my family and bring home two checks from two kids in my family. Absolutely. Um, you you mentioned a second ago about your your loss to Jan. Um, I know you after departing from the UFC, you took to social media to to note some serious head injuries that you you suffered from after the fight. Um, you mentioned about some of the blackouts that you suffered from. Um, I think you kind of noted that the welfare of the fighters uh, you didn't feel was, I guess, the UFC's top priority. What's life like under Bellator, and and do you feel like you are much more valued and looked after as a fighter here? I mean. The moment I got the release and everything settled from UFC and signed with Bellator, I knew my value was already, I was valued more over here already before even meeting anybody. You know, um, we made it, my manager let people know that we got out of UFC and within like an hour to hour and a half, Bellator hit us with a huge offer that we couldn't pass. So like even him, DC, the people I was with, it's kind of like, yo, if you don't take that money, you are stupid. So we took that and that showed me value, how much they value me as a fighter. And then a few hours later, I'm on the phone with Mike Kogan. And then a couple of later, a couple of hours after that, I got a message from Scott Coker that I wanted to meet for breakfast. So in a matter of 24 hours, a new promotion had offered me my worth and money, reached out and actually talked to me to see what my plans are, what I was looking forward to doing. And then they wanted to meet with me face to face, which is something in my seven years in the UFC, I still hadn't had a face-to-face -face meeting with Dana White. Damon? Hey, Corey, uh, two quick questions. Uh, first, let me ask you, you know, in this tournament, obviously, you're coming in as, as one of the, you know, highest ranked guys, so to say, but you're facing kind of the one unknown guy in the tournament, the guy who doesn't have the same kind of name value as, let's say, you know, Nimkov the champ or Yoel Romero or, or Anthony Johnson. Does that does that raise the pressure for you going into a fight like this, considering you are the favorite and the, the known guy and, and you're fighting the one guy in this tournament who isn't kind of a household name in this division? No, nah, don't put pressure on myself anymore. You know, like I said, going into the last fight against a man who just said the same thing. You know, if we're getting knocked out in your losses, you're going against a guy that got 29 knockouts all in the first, or so many knockouts in 29 in the first rounds or any pressure. The pressure is what you put on yourself, you know, but I go into training camp and I look at my opponent or my training partners, I'm going to look at my opponent. Granted, I'm not going out there to hurt them. I don't plan on hurting my opponent if I don't have to in a fight, but the plan is to go out there and dominate and win in the best fashion and get to him before he gets to me. So it could be the number one ranked guy. It could be the lowest ranked guy in the world, but I, the plan is go out there and fight like Corey Anderson fights. Go out there and be the mixed martial artist that you train to be every day. Don't go out there and fight down to the level of your opponent. Fight up to the level of the champion because we train every day to be the champion, not to beat the person in front of me today. Uh, one more. I know, obviously, your only focus is on Friday, but I got to ask, if everything goes well this weekend, you already know who your next opponent would be. Uh, what did you think, if, if you saw it, what did you think of Ryan Bader's uh, recent performance? I mean, he at the end, he turned it up. and He went out there and dominated and did what he should have did. And the um, only thing I would say negative about his fight is the first two rounds, I felt I was 
commentating it to my wife. Like in his mind, I feel like he's thinking about that UFC fight when he blitzed in and got caught. But it's seven years later. You're way better than that. You know, he should have he should have went out there and remembered. Like it's been seven years. I've learned so much more. I'm not necessarily gonna blitz in, but I can close this distance a lot faster. But playing the outside against a guy like Machida, who Machida's gonna either counter or play kick game from the outside, and what he did, he ate Bader up for like the first round and a half. But once he got past that, he went out there and dominated and did what he should have did and looked great. And um, if that's who I got to fight or that's who I'm going to fight in the finals, just got to be paying attention to those same things. Just can't let him get turned up in the beginning. Got to go ahead and push the pace early and do what I do and control the ring or the cage. Donna? Corey, your opponent uh, on Friday night is kind of an unknown quantity. He's the only one in, in this tournament who fans generally won't know. He hasn't been in the promotion before. What exactly do you know about your opponent on Friday? Um, I know he was the ACA champion for, I think he defended the belt probably four times, I think, at least four, or he at least had it once and defended three. Um, he's light on his feet. He plays the outside really well, and he wants you to overcommit. And when you overcommit, He's either going to throw a big overhand. He's going to shoot in for a shot. If you stay to the outside, he'll try to bounce, bounce, and lure you into a big, wild spinning heel kick or a, a low leg kick trying to throw you off balance and make you rush forward. Um, I just know he he was a martial artist, you know? He was the champ somewhere else. He is legitimate enough to be in this tournament with the other seven fighters. So with that being said, I'm not going there looking past him because he's not a name we don't know. I'm not looking in there and thinking, well, I was in the UFC and I was in the top. I fought the top. So this guy, he's not ready. I'm going out there thinking this guy is as dangerous as anybody else. He has two fists. He has two legs. He got two eyes and two ears. He can hear, see, and throw whatever he want to throw when he sees it. So I have to use my same tools, my hands, my feet, my elbows, my knees, my eyes, ears. Stay on, stay focused, and be prepared for anything because we don't know this guy. So we don't know what he can throw. He can go out there and throw anything that we haven't seen before. So you got to be prepared for whatever and just be the best mixed martial artist, mixed martial artist I can on Friday night and dominate the way I know I can. There is dispute over in the UFC about because John Jones vacated his title and then Jan uh, fought Dominic Reyes and then he fought uh, someone who was coming up from the lower weight class that, you know, <laughs> that, you know, there, there's dispute over the, the title over there. Do you believe that the winner of the tournament you're competing in is the best light heavyweight in the world? I mean, I truly do. I had this conversation with one of my guys this morning. One of my best friends is here helping me out. And I said, if you think about it, they got this debate going on between the best in the UFC and the best in the Bellator. Well, you look at four people that's in this tournament, me, Phil Davis, Rumble, Ryan Bader, have all fought the number one contender in the UFC. Three of the four of us spanked that number one contender pretty well and handily. So me, Phil Davis, and Young Rumble all went out there and beat Glover Pretty precise, not even close. The Rumble knocked him out in like 13 seconds. Phil beat him unanimous. I beat him unanimous. And one of us in this tournament has fought the UFC champ. And I'm one and one with that champ. So to be honest, there's a higher, a better rank of guys in the Bellator 205 than the UFC right now. Because a lot of the new 205ers coming up are just new guys that sign up from contenders and that no one really knows because they just got to fill these voids to find a new star. Mike? Hey, Corey, kind of to piggyback off that, Phil Davis said, one, this is the greatest light heavyweight tournament of all time. And two, Bellator hands down has the great has the better of the two uh, light heavyweight divisions between you guys and the UFC. Do you easily agree with both those statements? 100 percent. Like you said, I couldn't say any better like you said. We <laughs> have all the numbers. We have the skills. We have the names. I mean, really, in 205 over there, all you have right now is the champ and Glover and We've already, people here already beat both of those guys. So it's kind of like, it shouldn't even be a question. It's just the name of UFC, that's all. We hear a lot of fighters talk about having both the physical and mental aspect all in check. And when you talk about how much more welcome and loved and appreciated and respected you feel coming over to Bellator, having this quarantine time to focus on family and, and getting back to fighting for everything that matters, um, unlike you know, your last, you know, last fight in the UFC. So with all that in place, are you fighting at the perfect time this weekend in this tournament and moving forward? Oh, 100%. I made a post like a couple of days ago and said I'm in the best place I've been physically and mentally in my whole career. And that's just the fact you don't have that. You're not fighting with the organization. You know, I got to a point, what, before the Johnny Walker fight, 
I didn't fight from, I didn't fight all that year until the end of the year to fight Johnny in December because we were fighting with the promotion the whole time, you know? And then even after the fight, it still was a fight, you know? And then I wasn't going out there. It got to the point, like my manager called me and said, you're not the Corey we know anymore. You're changing. You turn into this, like this ugly person. You just have a beautiful soul. That's not you. You don't speak like that. You don't act like that. But it was to the point you get so fed up to arguing with people. It's like, I've been here for seven years and done everything you wanted me to do. It's kind of like, you still don't appreciate it. And now, so you're you're fighting two battles. You got to fight the guy in the octagon, but at the same time, you got to fight the people you work for. As for here, I hadn't, haven't had any of that. I reached out to Mike Kogan, nothing but respect. Every time I got a question, he answered back. Any misunderstanding, we get it worked out. Boom, he talked to my manager, my manager talked to me. Everything is worked out. It's been smooth between two fights camp there's no headache i'm not stressing like oh so if i go out there or i say this are they gonna punish me oh is this gonna happen if i tweet this if i post this post are they gonna get mad if i tag this person are they gonna get upset it's literally i can be me i have the right to be Corey anderson use Corey anderson's platform the way Corey anderson want to use it post what i want to do spend time with my family say what i want to say he's giving me my freedom of speech he's giving me it's kind of like the first amendment all the amendments that people are fighting for in the world it's like bellator gave me that back as a fighter as for in the ufc it was kind of like you better do this or martina Hello, sir. Um, just two questions. Uh, first of all, I would like to know who, in your opinion, is the dark horse in this tournament of Bellator? I mean, to be honest, you got to say, yeah, the guy I'm fighting is the dark horse because nobody knows him, you know. <laughs> but um, first, I would say me because I know a lot of people you see in the media. Granted, I'm ranked as high as I am in the world and in Bellator and was in the UFC. A lot of people think from the performances I've had, over my seven years, when I get into the big fights, whatever Corey chokes, he gets knocked out. And being in a tournament with guys, all of them have knockout power. Everybody expecting in one of these fights, I'm going to get clipped and get put out. But at the same time, you got to think, yeah, it just doesn't have a name. Nobody knows him. So everybody's looking like, oh, this guy's going to be the easiest fight of the whole tournament. Whoever gets him first should go out and just mull over him because he's a nobody. And, uh, and that's just that you can't have the attitude going into any fight against anybody because everybody has a puncher's chance. Okay. Talking about Jan and Glover Teixeira, you have your history with those both of, both of those fighters. Uh, could you please share your prediction for this fight between Jan and Glover? I think Glover's going to win. Glover is going to be the and new champ. To be honest, I fought both of them. I think Glover's just a more a well prepared mixed martial artist who has the better mindset that can go for five rounds. He has a better cardio. He can put it all together throughout the whole fight, you know? And I just feel Jan, he's good too, but we all see Jan, he kind of, he slows down in the later rounds. And at that point, that's when Glover is still good and he can take him down. His jiu-jitsu is just second to none, probably the best in 205. Thanks for the time, Corey. Good luck on Friday.